He said, thank you, Mama. And I said, you're welcome, son. You may be seated. Is anybody tired? Okay. Because I'm going to give you just a tiny break, except I really don't want to. I want to teach you a song. How about I teach you a song? Because I really want to do this song with you later. And we have lyrics, right? Where's my Jabez? Jabez, get back up here. Yeah, yeah, why not? I don't want it to be new to you at the end. I want to teach it to you now. I thought about that, and I just, you know, have you ever heard the expression, fly by the seat of your pants? You've probably never heard that before. That's an American expression. It means just go with it. And so um, I go with it quite a bit. Uh, the Lord is my magic carpet, and Church is just everything to me. The hard part is going home. Church, are you kidding? It's, it's like falling off a log, and I'm giving them a chance to get me all set up here. Guys, get my keyboard thing going. Where's my man? The guy with the little thing who just fixes me up all the time. He's always with me, and he's got that iPad, and he does that thing, and he just makes it happen. There's so many of you. I don't know which one of you I want, but you know who you are. And you're running any minute now, any second. That's the one. You're the guy. Yeah, fix me up here. Yeah, because I'm going to teach you something new. Uh, I like when people say I'm old school, and then I'm like, okay. Whatever melts your butter. Because any song that... Here's how come the Lord only tells me things that can be told. Because if it's in my mind, it's out my mouth. Aren't you glad? And everything he tells me, I tell you. Because I feel... I alternate between a chihuahua on a short leash and a St. Bernard with a cask of hot chocolate. I'll either bite your ankles or give you a big old lick and some hot chocolate. Either way, I'm going to jump on you somehow. There you go. Are you, are, do you think I'm crazy? Good. I'm going to remove your doubt in case you had any. And I'm going to take this microphone here, right? And they're going to edit. Of course, people who are live streaming. And I'm going to step up here and you're going to give me your hand. Look at how I'm speaking this into existence. <laughs> See that? That's how, that's how things work in the kingdom. You just, you just keep saying it until it happens. That's not name it, claim it. it it's when you got things together. Okay, Jabez, are you ready with me? It's just going to be the two of us right now. And then hopefully by the time we get done with this, we're going to have an army. I'm going to have to lower it. Y'all have stripped my gears. I sent a lyric called War. Do you guys have it back there? Will you put that up for me? It's not the one. War. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? It's not that one. Just so you know. Mm, it goes like this, and I'm just going to do it real easy. And I'm going to let you get used to it, and you're going to put that lyric up there, right? Thank you for clapping on the offbeat. Got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but marching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. I need to hear you say that with me. Here we go. This means war. Again, this means.
let's do that verse again. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Everybody! Second verse, here we go. I've been in storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my war clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Jabez, take your right hand. I was just thinking, how do I find red cloth in Malaysia? And I thought, well, I can't find no red cloth in Malaysia. So maybe you got a Kleenex? Where I came from, we used to pop a hanky. Somebody, uh, my hanky's right up here, Fern. Right there, right there, right there. No, no, baby, baby. On my iPad. I'm gonna show you old school. You call me old school, let me show you. You take this right here in your right hand. When you're fixing to get down, throw some hands on the devil. And you go like this. Three, two, one. Bam, 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 bam. That's, that's it right there. I like it. Looks so good from the front to the back. And we go like this. The blood, pop that hanky. I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. This means war, this means war. Okay, you got it. This means war. This means. Wait a minute now, we got, you like this? Let's just pop it, come on, pop it. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now you're gonna repeat me, I'm gonna go. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. Can't have it. All right. When I say you can't have it, you repeat me, and then we do the last you can't have it together. Are you ready? You know what we're doing? We're making a declaration in the presence of the Lord. We are affirming that we are in a fight to the end. And whatever you got to do to get your dance on, get your praise on, get your feeling going, get strong. Lift up the name of Jesus and rap whatever you got to do. Let your feet tap. Praise him and love him. There's nobody else above him. We fixing to throw down. I came to tell you. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my... You can't have my, you can't have my. All right, and then together we're gonna go. You can't have my, you can't have my. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't have my. You can't have my, you can't, you can't. You can't have my, you can't have my.
Lord with me right now. Hey! Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. All right, while you remain standing, we're going to go to the word of the Lord. Because we are being called to battle. Now, last yesterday, I don't even know what day it is. I, I spoke to you part one of becoming one. Just as the Lord gave it to me. He said, if you want to do Ephesians 3, Janice, examine yourself. Because you, I'm not going to let you join to my body, sick, dysfunctional bringing something nasty into the bloodline. He said, I want you to look at yourself every day. You don't do it once. And every time I walk into the presence of the Lord, I find something to repent for. If you can accept that reality, then you can't be part of the body. Because Jesus told Peter, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. That's not a one-time deal. That's all the time. Every day, keep washing me. My kidneys keep working even when I'm not aware of it. And this body was made to cleanse itself. It was made to keep itself functioning. There are organs that cleanse the blood, that take toxic sub substance in and filter it and dump it and get rid of it. And if we're going to be a part of this magnificent thing that's going to do the work of God, does that mean we're not doing it now? I I I'm not even trying to go there. Brother Hunley already explained to you that this is reasonable service. He talked about being a mediator. My husband talked to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ, we know that it's got to do it in us before we let it do it in other people. We've got to process and then we become the product. Hallelujah. We become the cure when we take the treatment. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord for that right now. Hallelujah. God, I want to take it so I can produce it and you can be produced in me. Hallelujah. So if part one to becoming one with you, with each other, in our local churches without killing one another, if self-examination is part of it, then here's part two. Are you ready? I entitled this, Throw Down the Accuser. All right, throw down the accuser. Let's thank the Lord and then you may be seated. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises, for your exceeding greatness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Before I make another statement, I want to thank again our beautiful children, brother and sister Lee. Last year, the Lees, the Butchers, the Caltabianos celebrated with their children the marriage of my daughter to a young man from Perth. And uh, it's a long story. I won't go into it, but clearly the Lord was in it. Uh, from the time we met his family in 2008, when both of those children were 19 years old, God had a hand in orchestrating. And I met Josiah and Judah then. They were just little bitty boys. And Cassandra and Matthew, it's embarrassing. They're growing up. I'm just getting older. So I have got to keep dancing to keep up with these kids. That's all I can say. And now I, the young thing that I am, have grandchildren. I don't even know what to say about that. So when all this band of brothers came together, I hyphenated everybody's name. So I would like to introduce to you the Showstrand Butchers, the Showstrand Caltabianos, the Showstrand Lees. I have now taken in under my wing the Showstrand Gabriels and the Showstrand Hickelas. I'm sorry. Uh, if I can name your name, you're mine. And uh, also the Serranos and the Cargondos, you have a place in my heart. So I've done hyphenated your name. Uh, with only having two children and no boys, my husband and I have birthed hundreds of kids and we just love it. Hallelujah. That's part of the perk of getting older. You just, anyway, and that's how I feel about them. It's, it's an abiding love. I love Adora and Sean and Abby and Jabez and Jesse. Uh, they're more than names to me. 
they're, they're, I have experiences with them. I ate with them. I've prayed for them. Uh, my husband got to be with Adora and Sean uh, when they were married. We, we helped do their ceremony. It was beautiful. It was lovely. I met his mama. And I think I met his grandma. I met his brother. I don't know who I'm. I just met everybody. And then now I'm going to have, brother, oh, Jesus, give me strength, all these names. I cannot call you Brother Sierra Leone, but I've done hyphenated your name. Adibu Aji. I knew there was a G in there. I argued with myself. Okay, Brother Ajibu, Brother Showstrand Ajibu. God bless you. I'm just taking this whole crew. Even if I don't know you, you're mine. I want to be one with you. So what prevents us? Well, I told you the first thing yesterday was the refusal to self-examine. And no one in their right mind would take a diseased body part and connect it to a healthy body, a, a transplant. We aren't transplants. And God is making a body out of a bunch of transplanted organs. He's got to make sure they're healthy. But there's another thing that prevents us from connecting to each other. And I didn't ask for this, but the Lord showed me. And he always uses me. So if you're one of those people that's psychoanalyzing where I get what I get, I just simply speak what I live. Enough said. How's that? So you can go, hmm. What's she been going through? Every single thing I said. All of it. So let's go to Revelation 12, and, and I'm going to talk to you for a minute so I can scream at you later. <laughs> I'm going to try to be in my right mind. Uh, I want to thank the musicians this morning. I love, uh, is it, tell me, Sister Cargondel, the name of your church again. Joy Fellowship, that ought to be easy enough to do. Was that all your people singing up here? That, let's give Joy Fellowship a hand. And so when I start singing and going buck wild and you know it, please lift your voices and sing with me because I have certainly been singing with you. And, and Tab Joy, so we got Joy Fellowship and Tabernacle of Joy and Janice Joy Strand. There you go. That's it. I will tell you this, that I can speak Espanol and the people that I go to cannot pronounce my last name. So I have told them to call me Juanita. <laughs> they can say Juanita. And I will help you with my name. Schö is Swedish for sea. And Strand is Swedish for shore. So my name is Janice Seashore. <laughs> How you like that? You like it, don't you? Okay. Now... My goal in life is to give what God gave me so I can see Ephesians before I die. That's all I care about. And my husband, will he, he teases me. He said, Jan, you could bond with concrete. I'll say, I just love them. I know you do. You love everyone. Well, makes me love everybody. Makes me love. Yeah. Na, 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 na. Okay, you clearly don't know that song either. I got a lot of work to do. So here we go. Let's trace out how come we can't get close to each other. And I got so many songs, y'all are wicked, because I'm a reflection of my surrounding. And all these secular songs have come to my mind now. Somehow I have tapped into your brainwave. I see how y'all are. That's okay. I'm not afraid of you. We can dance all night. Revelation 12 and 3 says this. Of all the wonders in heaven, there appeared another one. And behold, a great red dragon. And I spoke about this when I spoke on the red, white, and blue years ago here at DCD. Great red. Everybody say red. red. And great. red. And dragon. That's pretty descriptive. Having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns. You know what that says to me? It's a worldwide thing, and he's definitely in government, right there. We wrestle powers, principalities, spiritual weakness in high places. And verse 9, now we jump down from 3 to 9. 
And the great dragon, here's what happened to him, was, everybody say, cast out. That old serpent, so he's been around a long time, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth who? How many is that? The hope. And deceiveth in common English means deceives, which is a present tense verb, which means it's ongoing. It's never stopped. He deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So let's just lay a little context for what I'm going to talk about. Throwing down the accuser. The old serpent in Genesis, remember? Remember him? By the time we get to Revelation, he's gotten pretty stinking big. He is a red dragon. He's gone from snake to dragon. He's enlarged himself. He's big. And the Bible said he's the prince and power of the air. He deceives the whole world, but he's an outcast. He's an accuser, and he is enraged. Now, the, the, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna state some things you already know, and I want you to hear me because we'll read later that rejoice the accuser of our brethren. So we already know his modus operandi is accusation. Now I looked it up because I want to be like Brother Hanley, so I went and looked up the original language to find out what that means. Accuser and accusing come from the same thing, and it just means to bring accusation. So it means to bring it or to bring it in front of a judge. It's to accuse. Plain and simple, just that. That's pretty simple. So how, what does he do? Well, Jesus identified him in John 8, 44, when he turned to people who claimed to have truth and said, you came from your father, your father, that's who authored your nature. You came from your father, the, the devil, the accuser. And the lust of your father, you're going to do. Now, Jesus defines and describes him at the same time. He smacked a label on him. Never forget, he was a murderer. From the beginning. His character has not changed. He wasn't hurt and wounded and suddenly became this difficult creature. From the beginning... He committed murder. Never forget that. You're going to have to know your enemy. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not. He couldn't stand truth. Do you know that scripture that says they received not a love for the truth? Therefore, God gave them up to believe a lie. They didn't like it. They don't like the process of self-examination. And they will not identify the accuser. And we already talked about being in the light. And I told you that my worst enemy is the woman who lives between this side and this side of my head. Because she's very carnal and she belongs to her father, the devil. And that's her nature. And she needs to be sanctified or she's going to drag this soul to hell. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. Now, that tells us something right there. If we're going to live in truth, truth has to live in us. So the truth I don't want to hear, I don't want to be challenged in church. I don't want anybody in authority challenging me. 
necessarily start separating me from the truth that needs to live in me. And the Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let his conversations, study it till you can, his words come to you, whether you alter them to fit your modern language, but you remember things that were said and we come to church. The Bible said the foolishness of preaching, we don't get it by Bible reading. We get it by listening to a pastor. The word lands in us. We dwell on it. It starts manifesting its power when we acquiesce to it. That means when we give in to it. That means when we agree with it. So if we can't become one with this, I can tell you what's going to happen. This ain't never going to happen. So I got to adapt me to that. And Brother Hunley hit it, reasonable, remember? He said, if it's coming across the pulpit, it's reasonable. You are here tonight because a pastor loved you. I'm not talking about abusive people. We're talking about people who have a loving pastor who cares for them. That's all I see here. So this has got to be acceptable to us so that we can do this. If we're fighting here, just forget this. Now, when he speaks a lie... The Bible said, Jesus said, he speaks from himself. So you know who his authority is? He is. So when I see people who are making decisions based on their opinions and their perceptions and their interpretations, I think they've already drawn the dark side. I need someone to tell me how to interpret it. And I'm going to agree with them until the Lord shows me more revelation. I may see more than is said across the pulpit, but I am certainly going to get in agreement with what I hear. And if God gives me more, guess what? To whom much is given? So if I see more, then I'm going to have to apply more. The, The product is in the application. The more I listen... And adapt to what I hear willingly, intentionally, the more it bears fruit in me. So the reason I self-examine is because when someone gets up, many times I've just shut my eyes so I don't see their face. I don't see their clothes. All I'm listening to is the words because I want to hear something that comes from the book. I don't have to agree with anything but the words they speak. That's it. Are you with me? Thank you. Now, when he speaks a lie, he's speaking from what comes from him. For he is a liar, and he's the father of it. So you got to know your enemy. So here we're going to read his first attempt, his successful attempt at deception. We're just going to unpack it for a minute so you can catch your breath. And then we've got business to take care of. Yes. Genesis 3, verses 1 through 6. I don't fight the devil. I I resist him. I won't vanquish him, but I can throw him down. This I can do. And this I must. Genesis 3, 1 through 6 tells us what he was like. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, which means he was, he was aware. He was sharp. He already was ahead of Adam and Eve, and he had a plan. Now, remember, his character has already been manifested. He's murderous, and he's a liar. He means no good to either one of them. And he said to the woman... First, he spoke to her. I think he probably waited till Adam was away to have a conversation with her. And in her innocence, she listened. And what he did was he asked a question. So we know that typically what he does is he wants you to listen to him. So in order to get you to listen, he has to ask a question that will engage you in conversation. Did you hear that? I want to strike up a conversation with you. 
I'm going to ask a question to make you talk to me. So he went straight to the heart. Did God say that you shouldn't eat of every tree of the garden? So we know immediately he's asking a question because he's fishing for a response. It's as old as time itself. One question. Now in that question, he immediately cast doubt on what she heard and what God said. So now she's going to have to answer it. His second step is respond to me. Talk back to me. I want to be in a conversation with you because I'm a deceiver. I'm going to lead you down the garden path. Did he say that? And she answered. Well, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree in the middle, God said, you shall not eat it. Now, Adam probably told her this one. And you shall not touch it. Because Adam probably figured if she doesn't touch it, she can't eat it. So I'll add in there, don't touch it. Because you're going to have to put it in your hand to get it to your mouth. Sometimes people in authority over us are trying to obey the commandment of God and they add a few things on there, trying to avoid the closest touch of temptation. And then this is what comes back, and this is how I know he's already working. Where is that in the Bible? I already know who you've been listening to. Show me what Scripture says. I hear, hath God said? Go ask your pastor to find that scripture. And he, like a loving father, has a lot of experience with people, and he's seen what going left over here can lead to and going right over there. So he adds boundaries, and then when some slick little person can't find it, well, see there, he's not a man of God. Oh, we've already jumped to a conclusion and an accusation. See that? Did you see how slick that was? I did that in two sentences. So he said to her, and immediately he said, you are not going to die. That's not going to happen to you. Now he's got her attention. He immediately says the opposite of what she was told, and then he justifies the accusation. Here we go. Now I'm set up. That's not going to happen to you. You're bigger than that. You can handle it. And the instant someone comes to me and they're moving boundary lines and they're telling me they can handle it, I'm like, mm-hmm, I know that voice. In the garden. God knows the day you eat, your eyes are going to be opened and you're going to know good and evil. So, in four easy steps, listen to me, I have a question. Respond to me, give me your answer. Agree with me. I'd like you to reconsider what you were told. By the time you get to agreement, nobody realizes they're agreeing with a murderer and a liar. Because that's why he's a deceiver. We cannot agree with him. Because what he does is he uses a fact to bring in a lie. We listen to the fact and swallow the lie. And all he's after is number four. I want you to act on our agreement. If you agree with me, then you're going to take a bite. And that's all I want. Because if you agree with me, you cannot possibly be agreeing with him. Does that make sense? The result of agreement with an accuser is always the same. Steal, kill, destroy. Nobody who has ever agreed with the accuser has ever emerged unscathed. 
I believe it's probably where the root of bitterness begins because you have a choice to respond to what's happening to you, either with the grace of God through your weakness or to fail of it. And that's where the root begins. And suddenly nobody is smarter than you or me. I'm, I know best for me, thank you. I don't need you to tell me anymore. Are you with me? Are we in agreement? I'm so glad to hear it. You know that she saw, she listened, she reconsidered, and then she took action. And her action was justified because it looks good, it's bound to taste good, I'm not going to die, and God is wrong. This guy is right. I have seen so many people leave the safety and the shelter of what they know and what they've experienced for something that looks a little more exotic, a little more intriguing, a little more appealing. And they may retain their original beliefs, but their children do not. They are like discarded shells along the path of their life. I cannot, you can't have my family. Some things I do to protect people in my home. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to draw the line a little bit closer because for every line I draw, the next generation is going to move it just about six inches. So I'm very conscious of that, and I'm intentional about my lines. I can do anything I want to, but I don't do anything I want to because I'm restraining myself for the sake of that generation. If we are going to become one with Jesus, and let me tell you what, Adam didn't agree with the devil. He just had to agree with his wife. He didn't have a conversation with Satan. He had a conversation with Eve. But once she got in agreement with that voice, he had to make a choice. He's either going to agree with God or he's going to agree with Eve. And he made a choice for that relationship. He should have been man enough to stand up and say, I love you. You're messed up. I'm not taking a bite of that, but I am going to God right now and talk to him. He didn't understand the power of his response. Or I don't know what he did, but he did not man up to his responsibility, which was to repeat what God told her and to not go with her. And I've heard it. I got to save my marriage. If you're going to save your marriage, then you're going to have to be a mediator between God and the people in your house that aren't agreeing with God. You don't join them to win them. You stand strong and wait till they come to their senses. And then you become one again with the creator that birthed you. You never capitulate to win a war. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm tired. If we'll just let them in. And that's what my nation's doing right now. All kinds of people, not families, men. Men without any wives and children are crossing our borders right now as I speak. And God knows where they've come from. Some of them have come from all kinds of countries where they have no belief in our values and our systems. I'm seeing happening what the devil wants to do in the church. I'm telling you right now, I will not agree with with him. I'm going to agree with the word of God no matter what it costs me. I believe in it. But we're going to have to throw down the accuser. That wily serpent who is now a dragon created distance between God and his kids by accusation. He was the interloper. Did God really say that? Well, if he did, and you say he did, he did it because he was withholding something good from you. I want you to memorize this scripture, young people, especially if you're single and you haven't found a spouse yet. And young men, I'm going to admonish you. It is written in the word of the Lord, he that findeth a wife. That means she's not supposed to stand out there with a sign around her neck saying, available, here's my number. You're supposed to be looking, bro. Put your video game down, get up off your, and go find you a woman. I think 
I'm going to say it again. Get your head out of the game. Get your head in the book and take a look. You need a woman in your life who can help you be a godly man. Let the church stand up and holler. I'm starting to feel loose right now. I'm, I'm, I'm loosening up. I'm loosening up. I'm loosening up for the pitch. I'm going to tell you what the, the Bible says, Psalms 84 and 11. So either you are depressed because you don't know this scripture or you have done cross to the other side and you're agreeing with a terrorist and a murderer and a liar for it is written, the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. If you're looking for a good thing, get your act together, bro. Get your life cleaned up. Get your mind settled. Get your actions lined up with the book, and God's going to let you find a woman. I'm going to say it anyway. I got more where that came from, too. <laughs> Just so you know. Here's what the devil's going to do. Remember I said this is what keeps us from getting together. He's going to accuse God. And he'll keep you in circles about your personal circumstances until you reconcile with God. Some people are afraid to get close to him because they blame him for where they are. So the first thing you got to do if you're going to go to him is remember, he that cometh to God must believe he that he is and that he is a rewarder. Lord, I have a bone to pick with you. I feel like this is what happened and I am crushed. When you come to him humbly and you say, I am suffering from blows that happened to me. Where were you? I remember my husband coming home one night and telling me about a woman. He, he wouldn't tell me much because he says paragraphs and I see videos. It doesn't make for good sleep. I, I, I mean, I have a movie going. He's talking. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. And, and this woman had dulled her emotions so much because she went through such heinous abuse that... He told me she could take an iron and put it to her flesh and never flinch because she turned off her emotions because such horrible things happened to her. And she whipped around and said to him, where was God? And you know who that sounds like. She was speaking from her pain, but there was another voice there. Come on, preacher. I've thrown it down. Let me see you pick that up. And he turned right around and said, he was hanging on the cross, suffering your pain and shame so that he could deliver you. That is the gospel. I don't know if she ever came back, but she didn't say anything else. Because the devil is going to take circumstances that you see, and he's going to get your attention, and he's going to say, was this supposed to happen to you? Here we go. And he's going to accuse God of doing you dirty. But he's going to do something else. If he can't get you to agree with him about how rotten God is, he has found a surefire way to get to you. He's going to tell you how rotten you are. Okay. Now some of us are agreeing with him. That's a mistake. You're not supposed to agree with him. You say, well, it's a fact that I did this. I I'm going to talk about this for a minute. I have a very simple word. I'm a simple woman. I'm not complicated. I don't understand complicated things. You've got to draw pictures for me. But if he's accuser, and if he's murderer, and if he's liar, then he's going to attack my relationship with God. 
then if he can't attack that, he is going to drag up things I've done so he can accuse me because he knows what I've done. Because part of what I did, he led me to. And once he seduced me to do what he wanted me to, then he made fun of me for doing what he asked me to do. And so it never ends. And so I may not take a knife to my wrist and start cutting. I know y'all know what that is. But I can self-cut every time. Shame. Constant shame. But what I'm doing when I'm self-cutting and self-hurting and self-defeating is I'm agreeing with him. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when Jesus went to that demoniac who was living in the graves and crying and cutting, that's our first written example of cutting, Jesus said, get out of him now. And, and and what is your name? Legion, for we are many. He said, come out. Come out now. I came to save this man, and you're not going to stop me. And then when Peter was like, I've never been around people like that. And God sent him to Cornelius. He said, don't you call him unclean. I cleansed him. Let me tell you something. If Jesus Christ called you out of darkness, you better start agreeing with him. Don't let your self-talk be. I can't do this. I'm not worthy. I'll never be enough. You're listening to an accuser. Don't agree with him. You say, but it's a fact. I did it. I did it. I did it. Let me tell you what that scripture says. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. The blood is perfect when you are not. And if Jesus hung on Calvary and chose you, no more poor mouthing. No more, I'm, no more comparisons. Amen. That's his next little tool to make you measure yourself against each other. You know what that is? This is not in my notes, but I'm going to tell it to you. He said, I hate your idols. I hate your images. You know what an image is? I think you do. I can't dance and shout. I have an image to protect. I have an image of Miss Sophisticated. I have an image in my mind. Where would you get it? I made it up. God said, I want you to take that thing and throw it to the ground. I read deemed you to set you free from criticism, from the inner voice that rips you to shreds. I want you to lift your hands right now. Ask God to tear down that idol. Tear it down. Stop bowing down to it. Tear it down. That's not from God. You made it up. Some people are so attached to their images, though. The image of what beauty is. The image of what success is. The image of what perfection is. And I touched on it. But I'm going to stop here for just a minute. God said, I hate it. You know what their images were made of? Hard and inflexible. Unyielding. There are sometimes people in a marriage that just destroy one another because they cannot allow themselves to be human and soft and yielding. And they will not allow themselves to have a moment. And they will not allow their children to have a moment. Let me tell you that critical voice in your head is the accuser of the brethren. I want you to throw him down. Throw him down. I want you to pray for one another right now. There is an inner voice that keeps you away from God's people because you are filled with criticism and perfectionism. It is a lie from the pits of hell. There is none good but God. Hariyalamashanda. You don't have to prove anything. <laughs> you don't have to perform. 
You're not responsible for a result. God didn't ask you to do miracles. He asked you to love him. Throw down that voice. Throw it down. It's a lie. He's murdering you from the inside. Forgive yourself. I said forgive yourself. Plead the blood. Pop your hanky. I plead the blood over my stupidity. I plead the blood over my consequences. I plead the blood over my ignorance. I plead the blood over my low estate. I plead the blood over that critical voice. I plead the blood. I'm the church of the firstborn. I'm throwing it down. Lord, I'm sorry for not trusting you. Lord, I'm sorry that I doubted your goodness. Lord, I'm sorry that I've been holding a grudge against you all these years and blaming you. I didn't realize I was agreeing with a murderer. I have hung you on a cross again by agreeing with my enemy. He is a liar. He's been lying to me for years. You love me, you love me, you love me. I am acceptable, I am accepted, I am accepted, I am accepted. None of us is good, but God is good. So great in his mercy that he picked us up and he said, just let me in. I want to eat with you. I love you. Come on, I want you to pray a little harder. I hear the sounds of idols falling. Lies. Your image is the beginning of of contention in your home, your image that you've put your children up against. They cannot live up to your standard. Throw it down. Throw it down. That boy can't live up to it. That girl can't live it. Let her go. Son, you don't have to be perfect. You're already loved. You just have to be willing to examine yourself and agree with what you hear so you can connect with somebody like you. Jesus is making a body out of flesh and bone. He's breathing into us breath of life. He's making himself a bride out of his side, out of water and blood. He is shaping his counterpart. Throw down that voice. Throw down that lie. Throw it down. I'm going to stop right here for a minute. I just got to. The Holy Ghost is moving. Some of you didn't even realize you had images. But some of you have measured yourself against something you picked up. I don't know where you got it. But it has robbed you of years of peace and tranquility. You go home and look in the mirror and measure yourself again. You look at your husband and your wife and you measure them again. You look at your children and you measure them again. Jesus broke that yardstick at Calvary. Stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As long as you doubt, as long as you doubt, as long as you doubt, 
As long as you doubt that your weakness is God's opportunity, you will continue to cover it and hide it and compensate for it. Peter openly denied the Lord. And when Jesus came back, Jesus did not accuse him. He asked him the key question, which keeps the show strand lees connected to the show strand show strands. Do you still love me? Do you love me? And the answer came back once for every time he denied. Yes, I do. Okay, that's enough for me. Okay, so if your image of you is wrong, and some of you were raised in very critical homes where literally everything you did was measured by a very critical mother or a father, and you have been driving yourself to live up to that image, that image didn't come from God. And you're going to have to resist it. Because the next thing that happens if you don't live up to the image, shame will cover you and you will drop your head. Your shoulders will droop. And the devil has stolen from you your joy, your birthright, your ability to pray the prayer of faith, to be a mediator. But I'm going to tell you what other door he uses. So he can accuse God and he can accuse you. And, and the scripture tells us that there are three things we fight with. And I've preached that before. And I, that's not my emphasis right now. The blood, your testimony, and you just keep carrying your cross till you get crucified on it. And one day you'll get crucified the last time and it'll be over. And the next time you wake up, it'll be either to the sound of a trumpet. You'll go up with the dead in Christ or you'll go up with the rest that are alive and remain. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Here we go. There's one other person he accuses that keeps us from bonding with the body. Now listen to me. How can being self-critical keep you from bonding with people? Because usually self-criticism involves terrible fear. And so you will never be as goofy as I am because you are afraid of being embarrassed. Well, I crossed over that a long time ago. I embarrass myself sometimes. So who gives a rip? I'm going to be a bucket of bones. Unless the Lord keeps me alive, I'm going the way of all flesh. What have I got to lose? I already am mortal. So I'm all in for Jesus. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, name it, I'm there. I'm inviting you to join me in that kind of joyous lunacy where you just throw caution to the wind and just fall in love. I got a song for that. I'm drowning in a sea of love. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says this is how the next setup comes. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath and here it comes. Neither give place to the devil. So if you agree with the word and you've stopped cutting yourself to pieces, you're going to be tempted to cut somebody else. So, so when you report what someone has done to you, are you being accusative? Let me tell you what the Bible said about telling facts. Like, let's say you're having family problems and what you're going through is real. Some people believe that by not speaking and that they're being godlike. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The first thing the Lord did was go find his kids. Hello? Adam? Where are you? Because he didn't show up for the appointment. The Lord was not confrontational. He already knew. But he used the same thing the devil did. Let me ask you a question. I already know the answer. But I want you to talk to me. Well, I heard your voice and I was afraid. And I hid because I'm naked. Next question. Who told you that? 
he discerned quickly that there was a third voice. His, Adam's, and that other guy. Who told you that? Did you eat? See, I didn't want you to even hear his voice, but you did. So I'm going to make provision. I already planned a way for you. This is where we get freaked out. Because he said, I don't want you to give him a place in your life. But Lord, look what that woman did. But God, look what my husband did. But Lord Jesus, look what those children did. This is a fact. They actually did it. Here we go. Because the devil takes facts. Did he say that? And he uses them to weave a lie into a fact. So you got to know that there's something bigger than the fact. It's called the T-R-U-T-H. There's a fact. And then there's the. And the truth is not a what. It's a who. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. So here's what you do when your family's having a meltdown. And after you go and self-examine and pray yourself through so that you don't become a tool of your enemy, because all he wants you to do is agree with him. I knew that was going to mess up again. I knew. Because now you agreed with him because he was telling you. See what they did? They're going to do it again. See that? You've been through this before. See there? See there? The blood doesn't work. Blah, 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 blah. See what God has done to you? And suddenly, you are full of accusation. And the very people who are supposed to be redemptive and mediators drag the guilty party right here. Let's stone him. I've had enough. I'm not going through this again. I've had it. I'm telling you, I am speaking from years of experience. We've been married 46 years. We've heard it all. I'm telling you, we got a call that one day they were, had shotguns at each other. Do you understand me? You, know, you say, well, we would never do that here. Y'all cut it out. You got knives. And what difference does it make? It ain't the gun. It's the intent. And murder was in the mind of the people. And that's all the devil wants. If I can get you to agree with me that because this happened, there's no way out. And then you remember, wait a minute. I'm not giving you a place because I know you're trying to get me to agree with you. I'm mad. I'm going to take my mad to God. God, right now, I am mad. I'm mad enough to say words that could cut people, but I will not join my adversary. We don't need a murderous word. We need a healing word. I'm asking you to get a hold of me, Holy Ghost. I'm asking you to get a hold of me. You see the fact. The Bible said, speak the truth in and for me to do that, I'm going to have to get a hold of my mouth because the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. So I'm going to have to bring myself. I'm going to deny myself. I'm not going to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to give him a piece of Calvary. There's blood for that, but he did it. I know he did it, but the blood washes white as snow. They overcame him through the blood of the lamb. You don't know what my boy did. I don't care what your boy did. There's blood for what your boy did. I will not agree. It's over. They're going to drag us down. And where most people go sideways is they join the enemy. And they start attacking and accusing and saying things because their fear comes out stronger than their love. Which is why we can't bond together. Because if you've been in a church and there's somebody who just keeps falling, there's going to be a voice that says, why don't you just finish them off? You know they're going to never live for God. They're never going to amount to anything. And there comes that voice and now I'm the one who needs protection because I've got to decide, am I going to agree with what the word says? But they cussed me out. I know what the word says to do to people that are cussing me. Bless them that curse you. So when the cussing comes, I want to punch their lights out, but I deny myself in the name of Jesus. I know you are full of rage and anger. I can't even get to them. God, that man flipped me off. I believe you let him cross my path. He may be in a head-on collision today. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would bless that man. 
What are you doing? I will not agree with the accuser. I'm going to throw him down. I am going to throw him down. Eat my dirt. I, you can't play on me anymore. Yeah, but brother so-and-so hurt your feelings. Yes, he did deeply. So what do you do? So I do not take up a sword against what he did and she did and they did. I start praying for them. I have a long prayer list. God bless, bless. That could be me. That could be me. I could be, I could pull that on somebody. I know how they did it. I know why they did it. It has hurt me to the core, but I can't agree with him. What he's telling me is it's over. You can never trust again. And as long as I'm doing this, honey, I can only use you. Come here. I can't do this. I think the Lord is waiting for his church to be like this. We give the devil ample opportunity because of our suspicions, our cynicism. We don't know how to pray for people who have hurt us. And Jesus told us what to do at the moment. I, I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to be very careful how I tell it. It's my story. It happened to me. I wrote something and sang it, and somebody stole it from me and put their name on it. And I never knew it till somebody else came to me and said, didn't you write? Yeah, well, so-and-so recorded that and put their name on it. And this is someone I admired. Do you know what that did to me? I felt robbed. I went to the prayer room. We were in revival. I knelt on my knees and I sobbed. And I cried. I couldn't pray. I just cried. And I got up. And then it would hit me again. And I'd cry again. I cried and cried and cried. I cried over the loss. I cried over the disappointment. I cried over the shock. I cried over the wounding. I just cried. I, I just couldn't stop. And my husband went into a little store and left me alone in the car. And I was sobbing. Because I love Jesus, but I don't know how to deal with this. This is somebody I knew. This is somebody I loved. This is somebody I admired, somebody I respected. This is, I'm supposed to go to heaven with you. I, 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 I'm, you know, naive, blindsided, what, what, stupid, you, whatever you want to call me. And I couldn't breathe. I felt so nauseous. I just, I just didn't know what to do. And I opened my Bible to the book of John. And it says, when somebody does something to you, go to them. And actually, my husband did that in a, in a godly way. And, 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 and if they won't listen to you, bring someone else. And my husband did that in a godly way. And pretty much... We were brushed off and scorned completely. And I was like, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. And you know my instinct? Curl up, withdraw, go away. See, but I could never love you like I love you now if I had done that. Because my wound would be bigger than his need. I would have cut myself off from my own children. My personality would have changed. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because you gotta, you, I don't trust people at all because I am one, but I do trust God. 
And he allowed me to go through this. I opened the book of John and it says, and then you know what it says after that? And it says, if, if, you know, treat them like a stranger, which means you're courteous and you're polite. And I got that. And then this brother Serrano was the next verse. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. I heard the Lord say, Janice, what would you like me to do to him? And you know what? I don't know this for a fact, but I kind of feel like heaven was holding its breath. <laughs> How will she answer? Because now I'm in the court. Suddenly I've moved to a court and I'm the prosecutor. I have the evidence. I know the fact. I know the fact. I didn't dream it. It was real documented proof. You know what I'm saying? Lord, we caught her. Caught. And all I could see, Brother Serrano, was a list of my sins. Yeah. I saw that. Then I saw Jesus say, I forgive you. So you know what I said? I, I, I'm going to have to be proud of that young woman that I was that day. Jesus, I don't want you to punish. You've been so good to me. I want you to forgive. Don't do anything to him, Lord. Be gracious. And the Holy Ghost fell on me in that car, and I lifted my hands, passed the test. The accuser was knocking at the door. She'll let me in. I'll hit her so hard, she'll agree with me. I made intercession that day for somebody who wounded me. And then it dawned on me, like Jesus hanging on that cross. When you said, Father, oh, forgive them. What you did hurt me to the core, it meant nothing to you. I was just a fly to be squashed. But the Lord said, you're channeling something bigger than you. You agreed with me, Janice. Now I'm going to agree with you. And the Lord blessed that person. I'd like to tell you that the end of that story was redemptive. God opened some doors for me through that. But the end of that story was that person lost their way completely from the presence of God. I'm still here. I'm scarred. But I'm healed. I'm be like Jesus. I want you to bow your heads. Because this church cannot pass. You're going to have to forgive each other of stuff you've done to one another. I'm just going to say it plain as day. Or you are going to agree with the accuser and write people off. If you write them off then you can't bond with them. I'm going to plead the blood. I know that this is a hard word. There are a lot of things I don't want to forgive. And I'd like to tell you that that's only happened to me once, but every day I am being tested to see if I am forbearing and forgiving and long-suffering. I want you to lay your hand on your heart because some of you have been wounded by each other and you don't know how to get over it. Lord Jesus, right now, I am asking for the blood of Calvary to flow to and through this audience. I know that the enemy has let things happen to us that could turn us into weapons of mass destruction against each other. Parents and children, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives. I dare say there are some marriages here that are in great danger of dissolution because there has been such deep hurt. You did not say the vengeance to declare the vengeance in your gospel. You didn't say I'm coming after you, but you said to declare the acceptable year. I want you to hear today, Lord, we are proclaiming that now is the day of salvation. I want you to save children from accusing their parents. 
I want you to save parents from accusing their children. I want you to save brothers from accusing their brethren and sisters from accusing sisters. I want forgiveness to flow through us like a river because before we can be a bridge to the world, we got to be a bridge to each other. I'm asking you to let there be a baptism of love and mercy sweep over us. I do not have a stone to throw at anybody. I could be any sinner right now, any day of the week that I have ever seen, but for grace and mercy. And I'm going to ask those that are drinking a cup of bitterness where they feel like they have suffered for months and days and maybe even years, God, that you would take that cup and you would add to it frankincense. And you would turn that cup of bitterness into anointing oil. And what the devil meant for evil, I want you to flip it right now and make it good. I want them to see goodness coming out of this. I don't want them to see mercy coming out of this. I will not agree with the accuser because I believe in the blood. I believe in forgiveness. I believe in restoration. I believe in mercy. It doesn't mean I have to go back to the house of my abuser, but it means when my brother falls, I can lift him up with my hand because you raised me up. I'm asking this church to groan and travail right now. You're going to have to pass the test that I passed. You're going to have to ask God to forgive people. If you are standing in the place of God, then you're going to have to pray for mercy. I want the first person that feels mercy to be you. I want mercy to pour through you. God can kill any of us at any time. I don't want you to die. I want you to live. I want you to live. I want you to live. I want you to be forgiven. I want you to be restored. I want you to pray again till it comes out your guts, till you're speaking in tongues. The Lord is trying to make a transformation in you. He's trying to make a transformation from the inside out. You are wounded and broken. Do not deaden your emotions so you don't feel it. You say there's too much pain in the betrayal. I'm hurting too deeply. God wants you to feel it because he's going to heal what you feel. Come on, church. Come on. We're down in deep now. We're getting down into the deep. Lay your hand on somebody next to you. They are groaning. Christ is trying to be formed in them. They have been crushed to the ground. I will not agree with my accuser. I will not agree with my accuser. I will not agree with your accuser. I've heard him talk about you. He's told me terrible things about you. I will not agree with him. I see you in a different light. He hates you and he wants me to hate you. I will not hate you. I will not hate you. I will not hate you. This is a heart transplant. God's trying to take out the old stony heart. You got to get the accuser out of there. He's not part of you. You've been listening to him, but he's not possessed you. Throw him down. Throw him down. Throw him down. Throw him down. Get him out of your head. Get him out of your mind. Don't give him a place. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him talk about people around you. Don't let him talk about your sister. Don't let him talk about your brother. Don't let him talk about him. We are saved by grace. I'm almost there. Throw it down. Throw it down. Don't agree with.
with him. I know you got hurt. You take it to the Lord. Speak the fact to the truth. Take your fact to the truth. Don't take your fact to a murderer. Don't take your fact to a liar. He's cruel. He's cruel. Don't take the fact to a liar. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't agree with him. Don't agree with him. Please. Please don't agree with him. He'll use you to kill somebody. He'll use your hatred to kill someone. He'll use your unforgiveness to build a wall instead of a bridge. Do not agree with him. If you've got family here, moms and dads, I want you to pray for your children. They are in great danger of being stolen from you. They're in danger of being stolen. They don't see things like you do. The devil knows how to crush you. All he has to do is start talking to your kids. Yamaha, Ananata. Hallelujah. If you're single, single young man, you pray for a single young man, single young woman. You are my family. You are my family. I pray for you. I love you, my daughter. I love you, my daughter. Slow down the voice of the accuser. You're going to be given a chance to kill somebody. Don't do it. Don't murder him. Hariyamataya. Hariyamataya. I'm going to ask you to help me. Would you go help and pray with the Katsubianos? I don't have strength. I feel like they need strength. If you would, please, thank you. Come on, let's keep it in the Hataye la mashayo ye maha. I'm throwing down the voice. I'm throwing it down. I didn't know it was in there. I thought that was me. It's not me. It's my enemy. I let him come in. I let him hear me. He heard me complain. I didn't get healed. And he took up residence in my mind. And he got a hold of my mouth. And I've said critical, cruel, unkind things. Jesus, forgive me now. (laughs) Oh, make me one with my brother, my sister, my wife, my husband, my children. Oh my God, heal me. Heal me. Heal me. I'm not running you down. You're my brother. You're my sister. I will not agree with him against you. I will not agree. Cry, church. Cry. Jesus is being formed. There's forgiveness coming out of this house. The Holy Ghost is interceding for us right now. He's interceding for us. Push through your anger. Push through your hurt. There's been a liar between your ears shaping your view of your brother and your sister by what he's told you about them. He is a liar. The truth is not in him. They are not guilty of what he said they are. Push, push, push again. Press through your hurt. We're going to pray again. Lord, we're holding on to each other right now. We need mercy. We need mercy. Some of us can't feel anything. God, we're asking you, 
We're praying for those of us that have had a heart attack and they cannot feel what we're feeling now. We're asking you, do CPR on their broken hearts. Do CPR on their dead hearts. God, if you find somebody that doesn't have anyone praying with them, pray for them urgently now. Pray for one another now. Pray. Pray. I don't believe it. I believe the truth. I believe what Jesus said. I believe Jesus. I will not listen to you. Redemption is possible. Restoration is possible. The blood will never lose its power. I'm fighting that voice. I want to be one with you. I want to be one with you. I want to be one with you. I want to be one. I want to be one. Come on. Come on. Press through your offense. Press through it. I know somebody hurt you, but you cannot, you cannot use the devil's tools to fulfill righteousness. You cannot do it. Don't wall up your heart. Don't wall off your heart. Don't wall off your heart. Oh, oh, push church, push. God's doing some things, push. Pray for each other. We gotta get through this. We've got to get through it. We've got to get through it. Don't agree with your enemy. Don't agree with him. Don't agree with him about God. Don't agree with him about your parents. Don't agree with him about your brother. There's grace for your hurt. There's healing for your pain. There's mercy instead of revenge. God wants you to be healed and whole tonight, tonight, tonight. We're becoming one. There's no room for accusation. No room for doubt. No room for offense. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want a miracle? All things are possible to them that believe. If you really believe that there's no place in you for accusation.
Jesus called Judas friend. He never cussed him out. Judas never changed, but neither did Jesus. Jesus was sweet till the end. I, I'm going to invite you to do something very unusual right now. I feel in the Holy Ghost, not everyone will do it, and that's quite all right. Six days before Jesus went to Jerusalem and celebrated the Passover, Mary, who had been crushed because Jesus didn't come when she called, got over her offendedness at him. Mary and Martha weren't fighting anymore when Jesus entered that house that day six days before his trip to Jerusalem. Mary watched Martha serve. Martha didn't complain anymore. Lazarus, who wasn't talked about very much, was sitting at the table with Jesus. Mary, the third party of that little family that could have been ripped to shreds, took a box of alabaster perfume. And in gratitude for what Jesus did to their fractured family, she opened the box and knelt at his feet, unwound her hair, poured fragrance all over him. And the accuser walked in the room. How ridiculous that is. What a waste of money should have been given to the poor. He always comes to every church service and makes a mockery of worship and turns people into scorners who sit and watch everybody else. Not me. That day she washed his feet and Judas complained. Jesus said, leave her alone. Wherever the good news of what I can do is preached, this woman will be remembered. And so she has been. Six days later, in an upper room with nothing but men, Jesus took off his outer coat and knelt down at their feet and said, every one of you is going to be offended at me. She anointed me for my burial. I'm going to wash you of your offense. And when I'm gone, remember what I did to you. And I want you to do this for each other. When I was a little girl growing up, we had watch night services, which means December 31st, we gathered in church around 10 o'clock, and we prayed until the new year came in. It's a custom we don't do much anymore. Most folks can't afford to do it. Maybe the next day they've got parties planned. I don't know, but I remember putting my feet in a bucket of water and Sister Rosa's my little Hispanic Sunday school teacher took my tiny foot and washed my feet. I never forgot it. I cried as a little girl. I didn't even understand, four years old, but it moved me that someone so much older than I would kneel on the floor at my feet and tenderly wash my feet. That has never left me. Peter said, don't you touch my feet. That is ridiculous. It's offensive. You're the leader. You don't get down. That is a slave's job. And that's when Jesus said, when you get offended, you're going to have to be washed. The day in that car, Jesus talked to my heart. And he showed me my sins that he so freely gave away and covered, which made me empathetic to the man who had sinned against me. And I went free that day, totally free and clean. I cried a few more times, but you know what? I got over it. And I'm here today. I'm still clean. There have been many more offenses, and Jesus has come to me and washed me. But you know what's interesting? He didn't tell his disciples, go put your foot in a bucket of water and wash your own feet. 
He said, I want somebody in the body who loves you to come to you like I have and kneel down at your feet. So we've done something that, that has moved my heart. I've invited folks to participate in a dry foot washing. We don't have buckets of water. It's not an American custom. It's what Jesus did. If you are interested for the next 10 minutes in participating in this moment, I'm going to ask you to find someone you love that you know. I'm just going to ask you to kneel at their feet and put your hands on their shoes and pray that the Lord will wash and cleanse them. And we're just going to celebrate a little Passover moment here. This is a communion. <laughs> the last night of his life, this is what he did. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In the holy of holies, behind a heavy veil. Go get your feet washed first, son. Set the ark of the covenant. Go get your feet washed, my son. Where the most high dwell. And only the high priest could enter therein to offer up a sacrifice for atonement from sin. But the veil was rent in an instant revealing that holy place on a hill nearby on a rugged cross justice met grace now I can go Into the holy of holies I can kneel And make my petition known I can go Into the holy of holies and although I'm just a common man Because of God's redemption plan I can boldly approach the Everything you've gone through, for every broken moment, all oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, 
the blood of Jesus. the blood of oh. <laughs> Make a memory with your children. Make a memory with your pastor, with your pastor's wife. With a friend, we are a family. Who else will do this but us? Who else would kneel at your feet? I 
Let the love flow. This is what's happening. We're only going to be together for a little while. If you live to be a hundred, it's going to go fast. Do not take each other for granted. Let the love flow. Husbands and wives, companions on the journey, we're at war. We are a band of brothers. We do not turn on one another. You're my brother, you're my sister. Take me by my hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us. We're walking side by side as long as there is love. We will stand. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? I'd gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams When all your help, your hope is sinking, let me show you what love means. Love can build a bridge. I love you. Between your heart and mine 
love, sweet love can build a bridge Don't you think it's time Don't you think it's time not leaving you can't drive me away well you'd have to I'll be there to protect you I'm gonna build my world around you I'm so glad I found you Walk on the street of gold with you hereafter. When you're in trouble, you can count on me. I'll be there. someone and sing it.
He ain't in heaven He's my brother You